Hi, today we have an iPhone X with a Face ID repair, as you got from the title. Yes, this problem is very common after a water damage or after an LCD replacement. As you can see, when I try to set up the Face ID, it keeps saying move a little higher, move a little lower and it can start the scanning process. Well, we can diagnose this problem if you have a camera that can detect infrared light, then you can see that the proximity sensor only have one light, and it should have two lights. The second one turns on when the dot projector is working. As shown in the diagram, this sensor has two parts. One is the proximity sensor, and the second one is the fluid eliminator. The fluid eliminator turns on when the dot projector is working and tries to start scanning the face. After we open the phone, I am gonna test just to be 100% sure that it is a dot projector problem. I am using a iFace tester here, it's cheap and you can order it on AliExpress for around $25. I'm gonna leave a link in the description. As you can see, it's showing 4x marks on the 4 dot sensors. So that means that the problem is in the chip. Just to show you how it should work, I have here a dot projector from an iPhone XR. And as you can see, the 4 signs doesn't show x marks on them. Instead, it shows a sign of a sun or a light that it's bright which means that it's working. Now this step is very important and you need to be very precise. So what are you gonna do is mark a cross on the dot projector back and on the metal housing so you can orientate how to glue back the dot projector to the prisma. Again, this is very important, because if you don't glue back the dot projector as it was in the factory, then the face ID will not work at all, or it will not scan the face every time. I know that the steps are not in the right order. But now we'll need to unpair the chip from the phone and copy the info to the new chip, but that's for later. We also need to put the phone into do if you mode first, so we can do this process. Now the program detects the dot projector and the phone. We are just gonna press the pearl unbind and wait for the process to end. As you can see, it says unbind successfully, which means all good to go. Now into removing the dot projector from the housing and the prism. We are gonna use our heater with a low heat, around 240 to 250 degrees. And be careful, do not heat the FaceTime camera. Very carefully, just slide between the dot projector base and the prisma, and then push the base out of the housing. And then, to removing the chip, use a heat of around 285 and remove the chip and the small transistor and the capacitor to replace them with the new ones.
clean the underfill and the leftover solder, but leave a small amount of solder on the pads, so you can solder the adapter on them, since we cannot reball and this is a much faster way to soldering the chip. Now do the same thing on the adapter very carefully. Then clean the pads on the chip from the old solder and add the new one. And also don't revolve the chip because then the chip will sit higher than it should be and it will not fit in the housing. This is because we are using an adapter. Then solder the capacitor and the fuse and you are good to go. Now connect the dot projector on the programmer and put the phone into defuel mode again. So we can bind the new chip with the phone. Just simply click Perl bind and let the programmer do its job. As you can see, pass successfully. Now last but not least, we are gonna check our work. And we are gonna do that with our tester here. And as you can see, it shows the same results as on the fully working dot projector earlier. And also, the camera detects the infrared light coming out of the dot projector sensors, which means that it's working. And now to glue it back to the prisma, just simply slide it into the housing and make sure it's correctly aligned with the cross that we made.
and then just add a super glue to it and let it dry for 5 to 10 minutes and you're good to go. Now let's test the face ID. And yes, our job is done here. It detects and scans the face. So our face ID function is back. So that will be it for this video. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more interesting repairs. And if you have any questions, just leave them in the comment section down below and I will try to answer them. See you next time.